Welcome back to Whiskey with E. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let's just say, looking up at me right now, is this how parents would have felt when you're there in the kitchen, when you're a little kid, like, can I get a bowl of cereal? But anyways, oh, get the milk. Got it. Alrighty, so pretty much today, ignore the shenanigans, I felt like having a Henry Winterman's the longs, but I felt like having it with uh, something. So the something is a mocha. Alrighty, so we are gonna make a mocha and we are probably gonna pour up some scotch to try with it to see how that pairs together. So here we go. Satchel in, it's a mocha. So we're gonna add in some hot water just to melt it, just a tad. Give it a good old stir. Oh, get all those powdered bits. Alrighties. Ah. Alright. Yep, get all those chunky bits. Get all those chunky bits. Now we are adding in the milk. Boom! Now, let's go outside and um, let's grab one of these out and uh, let's get it lit. Oh, is. Hmm, so these are factory made from the Dutch people. <laughs> All right, he's made in Belgium. So I was going to give you a little, get in frame. I was going to give you a little bit of a history lesson on it, but let's just say they are the biggest... Let's just say they're, they're the, the, the ones that are sending the most cigars to us here in Australia. You know, because people like to enjoy the little ones that don't consume too much time. And there you go. And it did remind me, I've tried the cafe cream and I was thinking in my head, the cold draw reminded me of that. So, and then there you go. It's from the same company. But you know what? Let's go outside. Let's go get lit. And here we are, check out my teeth. Nah, alrighty, so five cigars comes in this pack. This pack retails for $50, so made in Belgium, distributed by a Scandinavian Tobacco Group, Australia Proprietary Limited. So originally Henry Winterman's was started off by two brothers back in the day. Now Henry himself, he had another brother, I forget the name. But uh, Henry branched off and formed up another company with his son. So then eventually in 19 something something, his son <laughs> took over the company. And you know what? They introduced the cafe cream probably in 1960s. They were pretty much like the, the top distributors in the British or in the UK probably in the, by the 70s, so uh, you know what, let's just get this lit, which I have been trying to do, honestly. I've been trying to do it, and I'm wasting time right now. Precious recording time that I do not have. Alrighty, so this is just to show you the realities of these wraps, you know. I, I just feel like biting it right now. Just finding a little section that's ripped up. Come on now, come on now. Here we go. Ah! And we just ripped the freaking little bit of the wrapper just because we were doing it so hardly. Wow, that is such a thin wrap leaf. Wow. Oh my goodness. Anyways, we just cracked a little thin wrap leaf situation here. Let me show you in the light. Right here. Oh, maybe it's too bright now. How do you be too bright? Here we go. Anyways, boring news. Let's get it lit. But let's just say, blotchy. You could tell it's like blotchy. It almost looks like it's dried leaves that still has some green in it. So, yeah, there you go. Factory made cigar. 
wrap leaf is so thin that I kind of cracked it as I was uh, taking the cellophane off. So windy out of you guys. Anyways. Can't even see. Oh, what's going on there? Hmm. Mm. Oh, I forgot to do a cold draw for you, but you know what? From memory, see, as soon as you light it, that, that cafe cream kind of vibe goes away. But originally, when you're just having the cold draw, you could tell that it must just be the wrap. Mm. Unless it's the tobaccos in the blend, let's just say it's not really that spicy. It's really light. Hmm. You know what? Very light. Very light, grassy, almost greeny. You know what? Let's go grab that coffee. And we're back with the coffee, the mocha. So you know what, let's have a taste. Let's see how it goes together. Damn, birds. Slight white pepper on the retro, but if you're not retro on this factory made to go, you're not really going to experience much out of it, in my opinion. Mm. But we're going to continue on through this first third, and um, I'll come back when we hit the second third. Mm. Yep, that earth, the spice comes in on the retro how, but on the palate, it's just almost grassy. You're not even really going to say it's oaky or woody that much. Here, let me give it a try. See? I don't, I don't, I'm not really getting that much on the palate. It's really light, it's not tingly, but good smoke production. I mean, these are retailing for, I guess it works out to be $10 each here in Australia. But you know what? You are getting an espresso note coming in now. But don't know if it's because of this, but that's why they say it always pairs up well together. A cigar and a coffee. All right, is we'll tune back. We are heading into the second third now anyway, but We'll tune back in soon. Mm. Mm. And you know what? Let's go grab some scotch. Mm. All the action comes in on the retro, you know. But if you just wanted something easy smoking, nothing too complex, just something you're just gonna have with your morning coffee, then I guess these factory made ones is the cheapest variety you're gonna go for. But you know what? Let's go grab a bottle. Look at that ash. Hmm. Almost a little bit hot on the retro, but hence why they say you should blow some out first and then do the retro. But if you want to get the full experience and sizzle your nostrils, then go for gold. 
Smoking, and drinking response wheel. You know what? Let's go get that bottle. And we're back. And the ash just fell right into the cup that I wanted to use. So we're gonna go quickly grab a new cup or just rinse this out. Oh my goodness. And we're back. Alrighty. We are pretty much well through the second third, heading into the final third now. So let's give it a taste. Mm. Oh, that earth, earthy notes is starting to come in, you know, that kind of like heading towards old leathery books or something like that. But you know what? We have some of the Games of Thrones from uh, Glenn Doolan, the Singleton. We're going to pour some up, see how it pairs together. Here we go. All righty. Let's put a cork on that to stop any future ashes from falling in anywhere. There we go. All righties. Here we go, guys. Now it's turned into a spur of the moment whiskey pairing for science. Hmm. Definitely earthy now. Hmm. There you go. Anyways, let's have a taste. Cheers, everyone. Hmm. I'm always getting this impression. I guess it doesn't matter what cigar you smoke, but this style of scotch, something that's not peated, it just starts becoming like bourbon vibes, like a multi sweet bourbon vibes. But you know what? Let's pour up some of the Talisca 11 years since I was just saying this is non-peated and I get bourbon vibes. What do I get from a peated? Let's find out. All righties. We'll finish this first. Mm. All righties. Mm. Ah, acclimated now. Mm. All righties. Let's pour up some of the Talisca. All righties. Pause with the cork pop. Not really a pork cork pop. Here we go. All righties. All righties. Talisker 11 year from 2022. The natural car strength release. All righties, here we go. Hmm. Definitely earthy, leathery now. Hmm. There you go. Still a light spice, but you know what? Let's see what this does to this peated scotch. Cheers, everyone. Drink responsibly now. Mm. It's almost like you're still getting that campfire, but it's like toned down the smoke because it is smoky. And then it almost brought out peatedness and it brought out the sweet huh. there you go sometimes you pair similar things to similar things smoky cigar to a smoky scotch there we go mm. Mm. have you tried pairing up a peated scotch with even a cheap cigar let me know in the comments, like, comment, subscribe, smoke and drink responsibly. Wishing everyone here a lovely Tuesday. Much love to you all, everyone. I guess I do recommend it, just a try. I mean, 50 bucks, you get five. They are little, but 